Hey guys, in this video, I've got five resources slash tips for how to learn synthesis and sound design and just how to get better. This is something that I'm constantly trying to improve and get better at. This is a question I see a lot asked both to me and to forums in general. And it's a popular question and I've had it as well in the past. So I've done some research, tried to accumulate a bunch of different resources I found and stuff that I've used personally and stuff that others have recommended. So not everything I'm gonna recommend is something I've personally tried. Some of it is, some of it isn't. But I just wanted to kind of give you all the information so that it gives you a starting point to branch off of and then you can sort of explore and decide for yourself what works best for you. But with that said, let's get right into it. All right, the first kind of resource are books, articles, and apps. And there's tons of stuff on the internet you can find for free. It could actually be kind of overwhelming. So here are some of the main resources that I found helpful for me and that also a bunch of other people have found helpful. The first one is the Sound on Sound Synth Secrets. So Sound on Sound, I'm sure you're all familiar with, is a magazine from the UK. And they've published this Synth Secret series over 30 volumes or something crazy like that in a bunch of different magazines. And now all of that is available online for you to read. There's this, this is like a huge, huge encyclopedia of really in-depth knowledge for synthesis. And this is the one you're gonna see the most recommended if you're looking for synthesis tutorials and stuff like that. And for good reason, this stuff is insane. It's probably going to take you many, many hours or days or months to get through all this material. And it's super dense as well. It's not just about the basics of synths, like how to make a bass patch. They really go in depth, like what happens when you hit a tom drum? What happens to the top membrane versus the bottom membrane? So if you're just looking for simple tutorials, like how do I make the Stevie Wonder bass patch? This might be a little over your head, uh, not to say that you shouldn't read it. And they do have practical sections in these articles as well that are just straight to the point how to make a sound. But there's also tons and tons of deep, deep, like theoretical knowledge in there. So this is more, I guess, once you know the basics and you really want to drill in and understand how things work and how sound works, this is a great resource. So yeah, check it out. I'll put a link in the description. Another great online resource is from Professor James Clark. He has a bunch of different tutorials on specifically using the Nord modular to create sounds, but you can obviously apply these techniques in general for synthesis. So I'll put a link for that article down in the description. And also fun fact, James Clark, I actually took a class with him when I went to McGill, but I didn't actually know that he was into synths and I'm sort of kicking myself. I should have kind of been more in touch. And other fun fact, he, started the Cyclonics company, which paired with IntelliGel to create the Shapeshifter Eurorack module. So weirdly small world, everything is connected. But yeah, check out those sets of articles. Lots of nice tips and tricks for synthesis. All right, next up we have this book, Microsound by Curtis Rhodes. And this is a book I actually heard about in the Make Noise manual for the Morphogene. And this is a great book if you're into kind of granular synthesis, but also just in terms of thinking of the scope of sound. So everything from a tiny little sound at the granularity of an individual sample all the way to sounds that span millennia. So it's a really interesting kind of mind flip and ways of thinking about it. Not so much if you're just looking for super high level kind of patch making tips, but more if you're really curious about sound design and you want to go deep on interesting concepts related to time and granular synthesis. So check that out. And just to give you a brief overview, I'm just going to quickly read through some of the table of contents. So here are the sections, time scales of music, the history of microsound from antiquity to the analog era, granular synthesis, varieties of particle synthesis, transformation of microsound, windowed analysis and transformation, microsound and composition, aesthetics and composing with microsound. If that sounds interesting to you, check this thing out. I'll put a link in the description as well. All right, next we have this book called Designing Sound by Andy Farnell. Again, a super deep book if you're really into the theory and geeky stuff. This goes from everything from the high level physical properties of sound to the physiological responses of sound to how we perceive sound. And again, less about high level kind of technical patch making tips and more about really understanding the basics and the inner workings of things. There's also a lot of pure data or PD tutorials in there. So for you geeks out there, Nice little resource. And again, let me just read you some blurbs of the table of contents here, just to give you a rough sense of what you can expect here. So you have categories called physical sound, elementary physics, materials, waves. There's a whole section on oscillators, simple harmonic oscillators, complex harmonic oscillators, intensity and attenuation, other propagation effects, acoustic oscillation, psychoacoustics. I mean, it really goes super deep into everything. Sound cognition, physiological responses to sound, listening strategies. 
All right, so those were the books and articles that I've personally used. And now I'm going to share with you just some resources of things that are very popular in the community and online, but that I didn't personally use. So I can't say if they're good or bad from my perspective, but I still wanted to share with you so that you can make that decision for yourself. And I've still tried to do a good job at kind of filtering things out so that I'm only going to mention things that either got good ratings online or that have been praised highly by the community. All right, one book that is very highly recommended is the Computer Music Tutorial, again by Curtis Rhodes. So it's the same person who did that Microsounds book I showed you. And I'll put a link for that in the description for, as well. Then this is an article called The Theory and Technique of Electronic Music by Miller Paquette, who actually wrote PD or Pure Data and also Max. So if you're familiar with Max MSP or Max for Live, so this guy knows his stuff for sure. And this is a free PDF article with tons of useful information inside. So I'll put a link for that PDF in the description as well. Next is a series of articles called Discovering Reason, and this is for Propellerhead's Reason software specifically, but you can still get a lot out of it just by consuming it. And it's all free and online, so I'll put a link for that. And on that note, I wanted to mention that a lot of these articles you'll find online are either specific to a, a type of gear or software, but don't let that stop you. Just because you don't own the gear doesn't mean you can't get a lot of information out of it, because a lot of these very long form instructional articles can apply in general to any piece of gear, really. This is this other book called Electronic Music Systems, Techniques, and Controls, which comes highly recommended. Again, I haven't read it, but definitely check it out for yourself. And finally, there's this book called Welsh's Synthesizer Cookbook, which a lot of people seem to speak very highly of. And it's kind of a rare book. I don't know if you can find it readily available, but if you come across it, apparently it's a really good book. But again, I can't say much about it, but you hear it a lot in the community. So worth checking out for sure. I'll put a link in the description as well. And then finally, there's this app called Syntorial, which is available on Mac, PC, and iPad. It's quite expensive. I think it's over a hundred bucks. And, but it gives you a really guided tour of synthesis. So it kind of walks you step by step on using and building patches and includes a bunch of video tutorials as well. So that's something worth checking out as well. It's not a book, but it's kind of a more interactive learning experience if you're into that kind of stuff. All right, the second kind of resource that is super useful for learning is video, which is obvious, I guess. And shameless plug, on my channel, I do a lot of synthesis tutorials, mainly patch making stuff, but I'm definitely gonna do more kind of going back to the basics of what is sound, oscillators and stuff like that in the future. So if you want to learn, consider subscribing. There's also a ton of different great uh, YouTubers out there or even on different platforms. Uh, Seamless R is one person that comes to mind. He does a lot of really, really cool sound design tips and tricks, uh, mainly in FL Studio, I believe, but he also does a bunch of different software. But again, the piece of software matters Less, it's really try to learn the techniques rather than how to use software because then you can apply that to any piece of software and you're not kind of constrained to any tool. And then of course there are paid video services like Udemy, Linda, uh, Creative Live, Sonic Academy. There's a ton of others that I, I'm not mentioning for sure. And these are great as well uh, if you want to kind of streamline the process. Usually you get more long form content there and usually the people are I guess experienced in the field. So to be honest, I don't have a lot of experience with these content sites, so I can't either recommend or not recommend them. But it's definitely something worth knowing about. So if you're completely new to Synths, just knowing that it exists, uh, just Google it, look at it, and see. A lot of them have free trials, I think, so you can just kind of watch a few preview videos and see if that's for you. But there's a lot of free stuff online as well, so don't feel like you have to pay money to learn Synthesis. All right, tip number three is go on a Wikipedia rabbit hole. <laughs> what I mean here is I'm sure a lot of you have gone into this situation where you kind of Google something, you start off in a Wikipedia high level page, and then as you're reading through, you start reading words that you don't fully understand and you kind of open new tabs. So this is a great way to learn something is start at a high level, start opening tabs for every term or word that you don't understand. And then eventually you'll have a huge set of tabs open and then go into the other tab and that tab will create a new tab, a new set of tabs. So you're effectively creating this giant tree of knowledge that you can go through step by step. And this is a great way to really dive deep into something and learn it. And honestly, you can probably learn everything you want about synthesis on Wikipedia. I find the challenging part is if you're new to this world or if you're new to any topic, is just knowing what terms to search for, or where to start can be hard. So I'm gonna put a bunch of terms and links to some base articles in the description again uh, for where you can start. But you can start by just Googling high level synthesis concepts like subtractive synthesis or frequency modulation or FM synthesis, AM synthesis, uh, additive synthesis, 
You can search physical modeling. Uh, you can search for basic things like oscillator, filter, and filters are a very general thing. You They apply for things outside of audio as well. So you might get into a weird spot there, but if you generally start with subtractive synthesis, if you're a complete beginner and start your way through Wikipedia at that high level page, a lot of times as you're reading through, you'll notice terms that you want to dive more deep into and then you'll eventually create this giant rabbit hole. So that's a great way to learn and it's free. So check it out. All right, tip number four is probably my favorite tip and maybe the least utilized and most free and most valuable is read manuals. Synthesizer manuals are like gold mines for knowledge. And usually people don't think of reading them because you normally only read the manual for the gear you have. And sometimes we don't even do that. But there are so many good manuals out there, especially the vintage synths, which at that time synthesizers were new and a lot of them were made to replicate instruments. So they explain things in a super basic way that you can understand even if you know nothing about synthesizers. So they explain like, oh, you want to use this kind of oscillator if you're trying to imitate an oboe or whatever. And they really explain the basics like here's an oscillator. This is what it does. Here's a filter. This is what it does. And effectively, you can just think of any vintage synthesizer, Google it with the word manual at the end, and you'll probably find a PDF somewhere and just read through it. You can probably skip the beginning of the manuals. Usually it's table of contents and like, thank you for purchasing and um, safety tips, skip all that stuff. <laughs> I mean, don't skip the safety tips, but for the purposes of just extracting knowledge from the manual, skip that stuff and then skip the bottom, which is usually technical stuff and implementation charts and sometimes patch sheets, which could be useful as well. But usually the stuff in the middle where they talk about the different sections of the synth, a lot of times they include just theory and synthesis and sound design principles there. So this is a great way to learn and I'll include some links for some really good manuals in the description again. Uh, one set of manuals that I really like are the Mogerfoger manuals. So these are the little kind of guitar pedals that Moog makes or used to make. I guess they're discontinued now, but they explain a lot of great concepts. And remember when I first got a Mogerfoger's a few years ago, this is how I learned a lot of the basic stuff. Like the ring modulator uh, manual is really nice because it explains what how sound is, what harmonics are, what ring modulators are, how they work. And you wouldn't expect all that in a manual. You would expect to just know how to like use the gear itself. But a lot of these manuals are packed with info. Another great manual, which is kind of referenced as like the synth Bible in the community, is the ARP 2600, which was this semi-modular synth that ARP made in the 70s, I believe. Uh, lovely sounding synth, super rare and expensive now, uh, but you can still download the manual for free. There's some weird photocopies of it out there, not the best quality, but super jam-packed with great knowledge, especially if you're into modular synths and stuff like that. And it's free, it's online, so no reason not to read it. Another great article is for the virus synthesizer. There was this tutorial article, like programming tips PDF thing. <laughs> I'm not quite sure where that article originated, but you can find a PDF linked and I'll put it in the description as well. But it goes through a lot of different things specifically for the virus, but you can use it for any synthesizers in general again. And then finally, the Waldorf attack, which was this drum synth, I believe. And that manual in a section has a section on programming uh, drums. And this is a great way to learn how to make snare drums, kick drums, and stuff like that. Again, you don't have to own the gear. You can just jump into the theory sections in the middle and apply that for most synthesizers that have similar architectures. Of course, there's tons of other manuals. I didn't mention them all. Again, the best thing to do is just pick, an os pick a synth that you can think of that's vintage or modern or whatever. Just Google it, get the manual, skip the technical stuff and jump straight into the meat of the like sound architecture. And usually that's where you'll find the best tips for making sounds and synthesis and stuff like that. All right, and the fifth resource slash tip is just experiment and play lots of different synthesizers. So this can get expensive, I know, but you can also find free synths. You can also use soft synths. You can borrow synths from friends. You can buy synths, uh, return it, buy another one, return it. You can buy used. There's many ways you can do it. And it's not something you have to do all at once. You can do this throughout your lifetime. Um, do it as you can, but really, try to expand your palette and try to experiment with as many kinds of synthesizers as possible. So diversity is important here. Don't just play simple monophonic analog synths over and over again. If that's all you've been doing, which was the case for me for a while, uh, consider trying different things like an or modular synth, like a Eurac or something, or a wavetable synth like a Blofeld or a bunch of different software. Ableton has a wavetable synth built in now. 
uh, or try physical modeling. Just experiment with different kinds of synthesis and play different synths as well. Because a lot of them, even if they have the similar architecture, have different quirks and ways to do things. And as you start playing more and more synths, the more you'll accumulate these little tidbits of knowledge and little quirks and gotchas from different synths. And eventually it'll all kind of meld in your mind so that as you're working on any one synth, you can kind of recall information that you picked up from other synths. And this is what I found is probably the best way to learn synthesis. Um, not that I'm an expert or anything, I'm still learning every day. But the stuff that's worked for me so far is just accumulating knowledge piece by piece. So don't try to find a silver bullet, like one magic book that'll teach you everything you need to know. I remember at the beginning, I was super frustrated trying to come up with sounds. I hear sounds in my head or I hear a sound somewhere and I keep thinking like, how is that made? How am I ever going to learn this? Like, how do you capture the thing in your head? And I'm still trying to learn that, don't get me wrong. Uh, but I feel like I've improved over the f last few years and... A lot of it is just accumulating bits of knowledge from anywhere, from different synths, from different music, from tutorials, from watching videos, from reading books. You just have to kind of be a sponge and just accumulate and absorb as much as you can. And don't try to process it all. Don't try to learn everything in one night. Just kind of have fun, explore and try things for yourself. Read articles, uh, watch videos, ask questions online. And eventually things will start kind of accumulating in your brain and things will start clicking and you'll start to be able to associate little bits of information to synthesis uh, components. You'll be able to hear a tiny little sound, recognize it, and then know from experience what knob or thing you need to twist to do that. All right, so hopefully those resources were useful. Obviously, this is not an exhaustive list. Uh, if you Google how to learn synthesis or synth resources, you'll find a ton more. These are just some of the ones that both I have used personally and the ones that came highly recommended as I was looking through a bunch of different forums and articles. So yeah, hopefully this will get you on a starting path at least and don't feel overwhelmed. I know I've shared a ton of different stuff and it can be a little overwhelming, but just pick one, start somewhere, start simple and just work on it every day. And eventually you'll kind of start accumulating more and more knowledge. And yeah, I'm also doing this selfishly because I want to learn as well. So if you have other tips or articles or books or anything that you found helpful or that give you like an aha moment where synthesis or sound design in general, definitely share that in the comments because I'm trying to absorb as much as I can as well. And I still have to take time to read a bunch of the articles uh, that I've kind of figured out and found as I was doing this research. Uh, so yeah, I still have a lot on my plate as well, but the more, the merrier. So let's all share stuff in the comments and help each other out. And I'll see you guys in the next one.